I'll do a do one more song in this tuning and then uh, change up it. Uh, this is a song I wrote for an outfit I play with sometimes by default. <laughs> Protest. Called uh, the South Memphis String Band. Nice. That includes myself, uh, a guy named Jimbo Mathis, and another guy named Luther Dickinson. Yeah. I wrote this song for a string band a few years ago, but I'm, I'm taking it back. <laughs> I'm taking it back while I can still sing it, actually. I may not be able to sing it too much on the this is about a, this is about the terror, the terror of Missouri, 1864, here we go. And the captain of 
was right hood, they turned right away. Some Robert Johnson? Uh, I don't know. Some Willie Dixon? <laughs> Alright, I'll do this here. We had a request for the lead belly. I'll tell you a little tale. Um, So uh, a few many years ago, I had, a, I had a gig opening for a band called Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Uh, never heard of them. So um, it was two nights. I did two nights with them. And the second night, um, after, I think after about three encores or something, they came came off stage and uh, coming through the hallway. And I heard, I heard the band guys actually singing this song, which... It was kind of, uh, you know, enlightening to me that they were actually listening to my set when I was playing. <laughs> but, uh, and then, then Neil came into my dressing room, and he's like, kind of, kind of sounds like Jack Nicholson when he talks. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, hey man, thanks for coming out and doing this. <laughs> and me, all right, being, being in showbiz, you know, I, I said, uh, no problem, Neil, baby, call me anytime. <laughs> so that's been about 20 years. I haven't heard, heard a word out of it. <laughs> So old Lynn Belly tune that I actually do play on the six string. I didn't bring my 12 string, so we uh, we're gonna stay in the saddle. Actually, uh, it makes mention of um, one of one of Bloody Bill's students, the one on only Jesse James. There we go. I can't sing about him too much longer either. So. Bullets was a falling, just like showers of rain. Oh my 
There's an interview? There's always an interview. <laughs> I get to interview you? Uh, Jim Cotty, Jim Cotty, you said back in 1982. Yeah. All right, we'll do, we'll do one more for you, and then I'll uh, take a little... Take a little cocktail break, I guess. And um, my uh, my brother and myself were hanging out with uh, with one of our uncles. We we're, were in Mississippi at the time, and uh, my brother was already kind of into you know uh, what we call a record collecting, or whatever. So uh, he was kind of interviewing our uncle and asked him, uh, "Did you ever hear of this guy, this musician?" You know, uncle's like, "No, nope, no, nope, never heard of him." Never heard. And he's going down sort of his mental list of names. He gets your name I never heard before till that day, Charlie Patton. And um, all of a sudden, Uncle perked up, you know, and uh, his ears, his ears, if he had ears, his ears would have stood up like the dog whistle that you blow and can't nobody <laughs> hear it but the dog, you know. <laughs> so uh, he got real excited. I was like, yeah, yeah, that was the guy, you know. He was really surprised that my brother knew who he was. And uh, so I had never heard his music up until that point. And I uh, decided when I got back 
home that I would check it out for myself. So I went to the library, as you did back in the 20th century, and checked out the record. And, uh, and, and I brought it home, put it on a turntable, and um, I did the motion. <laughs> and then the sound. <laughs> and I was kind of like, wait a minute, this is it? This is what all the excitement was about? And um, so I had to put it on about three or four times. And after a minute or two, I, I was able to train my ear to hear the music through the scrambled eggs. And, um, and I got it. And my ears stood up like the dog whistle. <laughs> That you blow and can't nobody hear it but the dog. So we're gonna stay in the saddle one more.